Okay. Now we're back. Archie is still a little discombobulated. Combobulated. He's, he's, while he's happy for the attention, he's also very irritated with me because I'm being all loud and annoying on purpose. All right, so let's talk about special values. Special values. So here are the four we're going to talk about. So NA is not available. Non is not a number. Infin Inf, technically, is positive infinity, and negative inf is negative infinity. Um, you'll see a lot of na, na, for uh, missing data. It's essentially what it is. Uh, non is you tried to do something and it gave you not a number. It's like a special case of not available. But these are the four. Um, for example, here, when we have pi divided by zero, we get positive infinity. Uh, when we divide by zero, which is illegal, uh, we get not a number. Uh, we can also subtract between two, between, so infinity, so one over zero, essentially, minus infinity gives us not a number. Um, but if we add those two together, we get infinity because one infinity plus two infinity equals infinity. Woo! So there are special values in R. Cool, cool, cool. Now, NAs are very special snowflakes. They are irksome in some ways, and uh, they are something you will get very used to because in real life, we have a lot of missing data. It just is, because people are people. And so here I've illustrated by assigning a, a, vect a concatenated series of values to x. One, two, three, four, and not. I really enjoy this. Uh, so when we take the mean of that, we get not, because not just ruins everything. It's quite irksome, to be honest. Uh, because many functions in R just don't, just do not like missing data. And if you give it any missing data, it just doesn't. So, and the defaults are like essentially to freak out in missing data. So for a mean, if you want to calculate the values that you can calculate, you need to change a setting in it. So you have to give it an argument of na dot rm equals true. And what this is short for is missing remove. So remove the missing, yes, and then calculate. And it gives us two and a half. Uh, in some ways, I kind of wish the default was to do this, but I understand why it's, I've come to peace with why it is the way it is. So yes, now for summary, a it's a little smarter about it. So what it does is it will give you the five, those five magic numbers, or I guess six. So we've got the minimum, the first quartile, the median, which is the second quartile, uh, the mean, uh, the third quartile, and the maximum, as well as indicating how many NAs. One. So it'll give you all that, and it kind of treats NA like its own group. Now, if you want to know, so NA is technically um, a way to met, represent missing values in its data structure. And the type that NA takes is logical. So when you combine these things, it can be a bit of a pain. You can make NAs that are different in types, but the default is logical. So um, here's how you can kind of think about NA. It's just a basic mental model. So unlike non, so not a number, NAs are genuinely unknown values. Uh, that doesn't mean that they can't function in a logical way, um, but uh, they are essentially just like question marks. And in SPSS, you usually have these as 999, which is not a great way to do it. 
because at least here you can't accidentally take an average with four numbers and a practically a thousand. So let's think about why n is logical. Um, and I am going to leave that as a question for you, dear reader. So why do the following two results give us different answers? So here we have true or NA. The vertical bar is or, and the output of this is true, versus false or NA, where the output is not. So I've got the answer on the next slides. I'm going to put some little ukulele music here and give us so that you can think about it because I don't want you to just zip ahead. I want you to think about it. I'm going to give an archy dance. Have you had enough time to think? Cool. So think about it. And let's also, if you haven't finished, pause now. Pause. Because I'm about to give you the answer. You ready? So, NA is unknown. So, it could be either. It could be true or false. So, when we put in um, true or false, what we get is true and true or false, which is also true, and therefore both are true. So it's the equivalent, so you can essentially pop in both of these. So we've got true or true, gives us true, and false or true, gives us true. But uh, now let's try this where we have false or true. So we have, so here we have, True for false or true gives us true, but then we have false or false, which gives us false. And uh, we essentially are given both true and false at the same time, simultaneously. So it can't tell what should be the right answer because it has both. So it spits out not. So this may not make a ton of sense for mathematical operators, but it makes sense within the context of missing data. And for those logicians in the room, I gotta figure out a different phrase for that. So for the logicians, this might make a bit of sense. So that is wrapping up. So that is wrapping up this little chunk on special snowflakes. Cool.